and most of you are sitting down and you've not got your PVC and certain people that know that they don't have what it takes based off of integrity, based off of fear and fair election, they are conniving and they are planning everything they can to take this country away. To, they are planning everything they can to make sure that they're doing this election. And, they, and you that have been sitting down, you have not got your PVC. Get down from that place and get your PVC. Have you not suffered enough? Can't you see what is going on around you? It is not in my place to point and give a name of somebody you have to vote for. But these are three things you look out for if you are voting for somebody in this country. The three C's. The first one is competent. Is this person competent enough to lead the nation? Does he have what it takes? Is he efficient to take up this country? The second one is capacity. Does he have the capacity to take on this country? The third one is the most important and the most crucial. Character. It is in character that you see integrity. It is in character that you see no corruption. It is in character that you have empathy. Hmm. Now, giving a breakdown of voters' registration and collection of permanent voters' card in Nigeria, at his address at the Chatham House, London, on Tuesday afternoon, the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, said records on the ground showed that the election will be dominated by the Nigerian youth. Yakubu, who said he was encouraged by the turnout of registered voters to collect their PVC, said over 600,000 eligible voters have collected their PVC in Lagos alone within the last one month. The INEC boss also stated that um, there are currently 93.4 million registered voters in Nigeria, out of which 37 million, that is 39%, are young people between the ages of 18 and 34. So out of that 93.4 million, 70.4 million registered voters are between the ages of 18 to 49. So Yakubu stated this. Now, what does this mean for the upcoming election? And do you think that the youth truly have the power to install the next president of Nigeria. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 0810384663. You can also tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow. All right, so this conversation is quite interesting. I like that William so Chambers video yeah, because he said, get up. I was almost standing up from my chair to go and collect another PVC that I've already collected. But hey, um, there is a lot of movement happening on social media. There's a lot of sensitization happening. The, the Nigerian youth, they've never been this, oh you know, God. and that's, you know, yes, they've never been this, they've never had ex, um, um, shown this vested interest, about, yes, yeah, about voting, these yes. particular elections, right? And it's, I mean, it's no-brainer. Why? Yeah. Because of what we've been through in the last eight years. But now, when we're talking about installation of the next president of Nigeria, do you think... The Nigerian, because I know that Uti will not have the same opinion as both of you. <laughs> but let me save her opinion for, for <laughs> let me hear your thoughts. And if you think it is possible for the Nigerian youth to install the next president, why do you think so? And let me hear uh, you and um, I'll hear Glory. Okay. Um, in my own opinion, I think this is a slippery question because from the data, I was even going to quote that same data. If you're telling me that 40% of the people who have registered as voters um, are youth between the ages of 18 and 18 and 34 now, not even 18 and 49, because if you now go further to 18 and 49, you're not looking at well, about maybe 60 percent. So, definitely, the youth has the power to change, um, um, or rather to, to vote in a new president, right? And if we have for that's almost half of 100, I don't think that there's so much more to say again. If 40 percent of the people are youth and then they can actually exercise this power, now the question is. I hope that these people that have even registered and then picked up their PVCs maybe would actually go out on that day to now exercise the power of voting. But then if we actually put in, because there's a strong demographic, so if we actually put in um, this work. work, yeah, I think it's possible for the youth to actually change power. Okay, um, how about you, Gloria? Oh, I'm fine. <laughs> I don't think, I know okay. that... Nigerian youths have the power to install the next president. Statistics already show it. Like if we are no longer, we're not assuming the figures are there to say it, then it's also about the intentionality, right? The, the drive, the passion. People really want change. I watched a video, I think two days ago, 
right, on ways where um, you, f you found a young man sitting, saying he's been sitting for two hours. So this is different. This era is different. The youth are more enlightened. They are really, really participating in the political process and everything going on. So, and you cannot compare. I you know um, some time back, some people say, oh, we're standing for us, trying to vote. People don't have that time. No, people are willing to sit down for five hours now. That's the current state we are now. You know, me personally, I've never been so intentional about politics or about voting as I am now. I'm aware that my future lies in this as well as many other youths outside. So if it's this is this is not just a question, this is a fact, right? Maybe I if I may paraphrase it, maybe you're trying to say that all these things, is it social media or are they really intentional? Are they going to come out that day? Truly, the system is really trying to frustrate people's efforts. You know, you going to say, I was speaking with someone today and said, um, there are people that have not collected, so they'll go there, they'll say it's not available, they'll go again. And you find people going, going, and going. This was not how it was. So people are really intentional. Not people, their youths are really intentional. They want this change, and they, they want it so badly. Mm -hmm. So yes, the youth we have, and let me tell you something, like we are no longer going to be cajoled or deceived to say our vote does not count. Let us vote first. We, we will vote. <laughs> we will stand there for us, right? So many things are coming up, videos trying to dissuade us, trying to distract us to say this and that. We are not getting distracted over. Oh, uh, this is, this 2023 election is for the youths, right? Since um, during um, NSAS, the youths now know the power they have right they know we have a voice and that's why you see most of the old the older ones the older generation then they know these things so they know we've realized it right and so they're now bringing other political tactics and jargons to distract us but we're not getting distracted let me tell you right nigerian youths it's not a question. We have the ability to put someone on that seat. And guess what? If that person messes up, we still have the power to remove the person. The power belongs to the youth. This is 2023 Oa. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> Glory for president. <laughs> I like the three words you used. You said intentionality. You said drive. You said passion. But I'm thinking in my head. Intentionality, intentionality. But let me hear Uti's thought before I come back to what I'm thinking in my head. Uti, your thoughts on this. Do you think the youth have the power to install the next president in Nigeria? Since you have, you have put the word in my mouth that um, I'm going to have a different opinion. Um, I don't like to answer questions in the absence of context. Mm -hmm. When you ask a black and white question as to whether the youth can oh Uti, we're losing your audio ah oh, sugar the, the devil is a liar we must hear what Uti has, has to say you know uh okay Uti, can we try one more time and see hello hear yeah i can hear you now go ahead hear yes we can hear you now yeah I said, I said i don't like to answer a question outside of context okay right Nobody disagrees with the statistics that Nigeria is a largely youthful population, mm -hmm. right? Nobody disagrees with the statistics that the INEC chairman has come out to say. Um, but where I say that context is missing is that even though you have a PBC, which is why when I see videos like William, this video that you, we just played, I get a little bit frustrated. I first of all love this journey that we're on, that more and more people are passionate about their current circumstances, right? And we want change. But I want to take us back to 2015, where the mantra was that we were going to get change. If you all remember, in 2015, it was APC change, correct? And everybody was excited for change. Everybody wanted change. And you, at that point, if we went back to 2015, without the crystal ball that we now have eight years later, we would have all been, we were all rejoicing and, and happy at the time that we had gotten change, that the youth will install a president. What is it that you are really looking for in the next president? And how do you get it? Mm. That last comment there about if we 
put a president in position. We don't like the president. We will choose the president in four years. Very powerful statement. But if you consistently make the same mistakes over and over again, you will consistently get the same results. So we're going in the right direction. But if you look at it contextually, we should be asking a different question. And that question would be what, Uti? So the question is not about whether we can install a president. The question is whether we understand what it takes to pick the right president. Hmm. So he has so, in one sense, said character, competence, capacity. Hmm. On what basis is the average 20-year-old or 21-year-old making that decision? Hmm. What information and what knowledge do you have? So while somebody is yelling at you with all passion to say, go and get your PVC, do you understand the impact of your choice? Do you understand what it takes to run a country? Do you understand that one person does not make the change that you're looking for? Do you understand that this change is a process? So whilst I see people tweet on Twitter that the minute we get this person as president, in five months, Nigeria would have changed. It tells me that we have a knowledge problem, and that knowledge problem is more dangerous. Because when you get to the ballot box, when you get there to vote, you only have a limited number of choices to choose from. The bigger problem is that you can't write a name on that paper. So what you do is you take the choices that you have and you pick the best of the worst. So we need to go beyond this passion for just the PVC and get passionate about actually changing Nigeria's fortunes and understanding that we each have a role to play. The card that everybody is shouting about now is to get your PVC card. Nobody's talking about going to join a political party. The party that everybody is pulling for the... For the, for the um, for the candidate, how many people have gone to join that party? How many people are interested in the actual future beyond the day of the election? How many people have stopped to think that when this person, when this person is finally chosen, how are they going to run the country? Mm. So these are the questions that for me, let's not get so focused on just the today. Because if you don't get it right today and you say, oh yes, I can change in four years, a lot of damage can be done in four years. So this passion and power that we're using behind Get Your PVC, because let's change the narrative and let's get young people involved. Everybody's saying you can pick your future. How about we say that you are the future? How about we say you are the future? So let's look at the statistics that matter. How many people have joined political parties? I keep, we keep, I keep trying to reiterate this, that the ballot still has 18 people or however many parties that we have. You can't write a name on there. Now, do you have a say in how that name got there? No. So every time, the real choice has been made for you. Then somebody's telling you that your PVC is the problem. How many PVCs were in circulation at the last election? Mm -hmm. How many people actually used them and voted? Absolutely. So that's why I said that. It's, it's important for us to ask the right questions and not just play to the gallery to say, this is what, and every change can be good or bad. Absolutely. I remember when we were shouting change in 2015, change, change in 2015. Who could, have told, who could have told you that the people who were passionate enough to go out and vote then because they believed in the change narrative would believe that Nigeria would be where it is today eight years later? And somehow, we're about to, to um, instead of learning from our mistakes, we're still going down the same path and hoping for a different result. I don't see how. Hmm. All I see is that we're we are guaranteeing that either if maybe there's some miracle because miracles can happen, or we're going to get the very same result. So, okay. So I, I, want to, I want to butt in here for a bit, Uti, because I, I'd like to ask us a, a, a question based on what um, William Suchemba said, which is what I hear come on around the Nigerian youth, right? When he was talking about what to look out for. Uti, you are spot on when you talk about political parties. I mean, we've said this thing several times. We've said it that... It is not at the ballot that decisions are made for good leadership. It is at the political, the po uh, what's it called, the local government level, your council, all those places where you're supposed to be part of a political structure that eventually selects the people that go on to the ballot. So you are very spot on when you talk about us changing that narrative and moving it towards people going actually to register in a political party. That is spot on. Where, however, this is where we have gotten to right now. 
The young people are not in political parties that much. But what we are faced with are three choices, which is what we always do every four years for an election. We always wait till the time where at the point of choice, which is why what you're saying, putting it in context, makes a lot of sense. That we also should be part of the people changing that narrative that is not the PVC per se. It is the decision to put to, to, to elect the people that eventually make it to the ballot. That is where the real power lies. Which is where those people, all the delegates and all of that, you see them exercising, you know, their muscle. Yeah. Because at the ballot, it's already too late. Yes. Because they've already decided yeah. who they wanted to Presented decide. That's it. So, I mean, why do we have, for instance, the Labour Party um, candidate, Peter Obi, moving to a, lab um, a Labour Party? It was because at the level of decision-making, where yeah. he was supposed to be selected, yeah. even though he, he seemed he had all the credibility and yeah. everything, he, was he wasn't selected yes. as the flag bearer of the yeah. party. So he had to move to a different... Yeah. Um, so what you're saying, Uti, is spot on. But we are where we are now, right? And the elections are in 37 days. We need to also now sit back and say, okay, what do we even look out for these options that they have thrown at us, right? Is it, is it... The point, the point that I'm trying to make, right, is that at the time at which this conversation is on the front burner, the time when people are really listening is now. Yes. So it is important that we are, we are giving the right messaging to people. Because if we take what has happened historically, the minute the president is elected, everybody is going to go back into their holes. Whatever happens, we will accept the outcome until the next four years. So whilst people are listening, it's important that we use the opportunity to broaden the conversation. So when Williams is putting out this kind of video, it's great, but don't stop there. Get the young people to really realize where their power is. Their power is not on the election day. Yes, they have the numbers. But that you make the right choice on that day. You can't tell the future. Hmm. Just in the same way we've had politicians and, and people in the past offer everything and sound right before election day. Then after election day, we have the same disappointment. So my thing is simply the fact that when you have people's attention... Hmm. That is where you should drive yes, home the use message. It. Absolutely. The PBC and yes, it's yielding fruit, but we need to expand it. Mm. If not, we will lose the opportunity to catch people. Because mm. people take action when they are angry, people take action when they are frustrated. Which is why I use that example that whilst everybody is behind this particular candidate, please look at the activity in that party. What has the, the, the actual membership grown by? Mm. It's a very important ask because it's not a it's not a um, singular activity. It's a group. It's a collective. And we must get people to understand that. Absolutely. It's more important than this actual, uh, let's win, let's win today. Absolutely. You know what, let's take a very short break, right? We want to open our phone lines. I'd really love to hear what you're saying because what Uti has said is, it makes sense. Now everybody's listening, so let us, yeah, stay with us, we'll be right back. <laughs> All right, thanks for staying with us now. If you just tuned in, it's our ladies' night out, and we're discussing the topic. Do the youth have the power to install the next president? Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa with the hashtag Wayshow. Now, the phone line is now open. Remember the rules. Turn off the volume of whatever device you're watching us from. The number to call is 70 That's the number to call. I'd like um, um, Mary and Chinelo to butt in because Uti raised a very valid point that how many, how, how, how much membership has Labour Party, for instance, because that's the party for the youth, right? Yeah. How much has their membership grown from the time of you know the um, the, the uh, ascending of a uh, Peter Obi, for instance, as the flag bearer to now, because that is where the real number lies. And if we want to go back to our question, which is, do the youth have the power to install the president? Hearing Uti and saying to us that let's broaden the conversation. Yes, we do have the power, but not at the polling unit, not with our PVC. We have the powers if we can then infiltrate political parties and then go there to then get the numbers to then decide who eventually will be the back. So imagine if this number of youth are in all three political major political parties. Yes. What happens? We will pick 
all the right people from each party. So let the best man win. So we are no longer picking between the devil and the deep blue sea or picking the lesser evil. We are picking three competent people, whoever wins, it still, it still runs with the flow. If I hear Uti correctly, I think that's what she's trying to say. But let me hear your thoughts. Okay, so I'll say, I think that we're on a very good path so far. And this is my reason. 2015, how many people, how many times did we hear about Labour Party? Mm. Not a lot, right? But then Peter became whatever happened with his previous party and then he then decamped and then joined APC and then brought some form of awareness to, um, what's it called, to Labour Party, right? I think that's already a good part. Also, if you look at it in 2015 as well, we had about 70-something political parties on the ballot paper to vote for. Now we have just 18. Now that means that we've actually reduced to like the most important, would I call them the most important, but yeah, the most relevant part parties. Or serious-minded people. Serious -minded people to vote for, right? Mm. We don't now have those parties that you can't even tell where they, you know, just came up from. So I think that we're not, we're not there yet, but we're making good progress i must say in terms of politics and this is also because the youth have woken up so yes we, we might not be i understand what Uti is saying we might not be at that position where you know we have it all figured out okay they are like maybe we used to have twenty thousand people in labor party before and now there are seventy thousand people you know and numbers like that but the, i would say from my own research in fact i saw a video where that man who had a money, they refer it to me. There's a bit, there's a, a video he has on Twitter where he was talking about how Labour Party has actually grown mm -hmm. so far. I personally, because I mean, I want to do politics in the future. I would want to join a party like that, right? Because I know that there is there is some form of progress, there is some form of growth, which is not very visible right now. But then I say, I must say, if we continue, like um, very rightly said, if we continue with this same intentionality that we have right now, trust me, we are in 2027. We won't be saying, we won't be talking mm. about this okay. anymore. Let me take, I think I believe we have a caller from Abuja, Olu, I think. Hi, you're live. Hello, Hello are you there? Yes, I'm here. Go ahead. Good evening. Hi, good evening. Yeah, thank you very much. I love your conversation. Thank you. Uh, let me make my own we are asking whether the youth have power to uh, let them open uh, their this time around. Uh, the truth is that um, the youth may have the power, really, but I don't know whether they will allow the youth to uh, actually elect their own president. Mm -hmm. The promises from the past leaders have been there. I, I remember very well that of Jonathan. Everybody went for Jonathan, thinking that things would be better than uh, maybe other soldiers with Jim and other regimes. But um, thereafter, what do we what do we see? Then later we say Buhari will do something because it's not corrupt in this and that. He will stop the, uh, the insecurity in the country. But what do we see again? So people are not talking about OB. I don't know whether we can also go for OB because I, to me, all these promises have been there and uh, they have been always failure. So we are in a serious dilemma. <laughs> Thank because you. I, 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 was, I know very well that during OB, I don't see his performance anyway. Mm. And the fact that the other candidates are not popular does not mean that they are they cannot perform better than yeah. uh, the three people. Uh, Thank uh, you. Uh, Atiku and Obi. Thank you so much. So, uh, it's a serious dilemma. That is, that is the end you know. Thank you. Well, in a serious di dilemma. Le uh, so let me hear your thoughts, Glory. Um, so I'll, I'll make reference to the last thing you responded to Utsi, saying this is where we are now. We are at a place where we have three candidates and we have to make a choice, right? So we are trying to solve why thinking for the future. Where are we now? How do we handle this <laughs> current? Yes, yeah, solve the problem. Do you understand? I've been having conversation, whether you like it or not, right? You walk, you find people talking about politics. You have no choice than to listen. And you still find some youths 
not being confident, thinking like they still have this mentality that, oh, um, they will still elect, they will still choose those they want to choose, mm. you know. There's still the rigging of elections. So people still have that mentality. And that's the reason why conversations like this is very important. It's sort of an empowerment to the youth to know that you guys are in the right direction, right? And to know that you have a voice. And if you are united and you have one voice, right, it will count for something. So that's, that's the angle where I'm coming from, to say that, Yes, we know the system currently brings, makes these choices for us, and we have to make the fight, just like choosing among what the system has brought for us. But that's where we are now. So, so, so what is, let us, let why we are trying to solve the problem? Okay, let us let's make do what we have now. Uh, we have someone from Abuja as well. Hi, you're live. Uti, sorry, I'll come to you, Uti. Let me, let me take a bitchy from Abuja. Abuja, yes. Go ahead, please. Okay, good evening. Good evening. Yes, uh, my name is Abba from Abuja. Go ahead. Uh, uh, for the topic you are discussing is an interesting one. And uh, if you if you if, if you look at the way things are going on now, from your your uh, from the perspective you are looking at it, the youth are actually ready to put up power. Even even if it doesn't happen. In 2023, it has already shown clearly that the Nigerian populace that uh, the youth are actually ready. Mm -hmm. The thing is that this uh, old uh, uh, class have taken the youth backward for so long, and it is right time the youth be able to put up the right place in Thank this you. governance. Because if you see the way things are being done by the elder, by the elder. It is frustrating. We have an energetic and very intelligent class of youth that are capable to rule the countries perfectly without any problems. Mm. But if you look at the way we play our game, that is why the youth have been taken back. But if people are, if the youth are really serious, they can take all this power. Thank you so because much. Because if you put the crop of, of the board and leader, they, they edge the order. From those who are in the game now, who among them hmm. that you think that can fit into to take us to the next level? Thank it is you. a big, which the youth are clamoring behind now. Thank you so much, Abechi. So let's try to keep our conversations within a minute so we can have more people calling. Uti, you were going to interrupt uh, or interject while, um, um, what's it called, Glory was talking. You want to come in here? Okay, so, so what I was trying to say that, um, again, it's dangerous when we say that people are having conversations. Don't forget that the conversations are happening. Now, if you don't have the right context to those conversations, bad information still spreads. And that is just as dangerous. So it's great that these conversations are happening, that you say wherever you go, people are talking about politics. But people need to talk about the right things. Or even though, because it's, it's not just, it's about the outcome, right? What are you looking for? What is the outcome that you're looking for? So yes, people are talking. But it's just like, oh, we've all been taught by a teacher that doesn't know what they're teaching. Then we all fail the exam. Who do we blame? Do you see what I mean? So it's, it's great that conversations are happening. And that's what I keep hearing. And that's why I say that narrative is dangerous. Because we keep saying, oh, it's good that people are talking. It's good that people are passionate. Is it passionate that we want or we want change mm. or we want a result? Okay. So that's, that's why I said that when people are listening, please, let's make sure that we are listening right. Hmm. I get you. I, I, I mean, I get you. So it's not enough for us to just be having the conversation. Is that we are... So, so I think where I hear Uti, you know, speaking, I'm just thinking strategy. Because, you see, do you have the power to install the next president? Yes, you have the power. But do you have the strategy yes. to do that? The answer is no. Because we are not really there yet. Proactivism is different from being reactive. What we see now with the youth, right, is a reaction to a pain, a reaction to something. 
we we when we so when Uti is saying join the political party, it is you being actually very proactive, saying that you know what, before we even get to where the point where I'll be uh, reacting to anything, let me just go ten steps ahead and go and wait for them in front, which is a strategy that we do not have. But I think we have a caller. Hello, you're live. Austin. Good evening. Hi, good evening. Happy New Year to you all. Yes, yeah, so Happy New Year. Uh, okay, so um, my my contribution to this is that uh, I think it is not right to say Labour Party is a party for the youth. Simply because uh, Mr. Peter will be the one, uh, the flag bearer. Peter will be is over 60 now, he's 61. He's not a, Peter will be is not a youth. And uh, when you look at the other political parties, you have a lot of youth there. If you look at uh, PDP and even APC, you have so many youth who are in those parties. And, but I can understand that because people are, you know, a lot of uh, people, people are angry with the two parties, the other two political parties, PDP and APC, then you see them gravitating towards uh, the Labour Party. Uh, so that's the that's my own uh, contribution. Thank you so uh, much. Uh, we, we we should not tag the uh, Labour Party as a party for the youth. Thank you. So I think when we say Labour Party is the party for the youth, it's not particularly about the candidate. It's more that the the majority of young people are Tending. tilting yes. towards a Labour Party based on the candidate. We have not said Peter Obi is a youth before they were <laughs> <laughs> they were quote unquote us. But hey, we are trying to wrap up the conversation. But but Uti, I think. I, I hear your conversation and I hear you clearly. Um, but I, I wanted to touch a little bit on what William Uchemba had said. That, yes, okay, right now we actually do have not three. We have four very good, because I've listened to the presidential candidate, what am I saying, even five. I've listened to the presidential candidate of um, uh, a YPP, I think, AMPP or what, or, that's um, Kwa Kwanso. Okay. And the guy is brilliant. The guy has done so much in impacting young people based on um, the, the what's it called scholarships that he does for education, right? You know, so but I think we have um, Loma from Abia. Okay, so oh, we lost the call. So I'm saying to you that based on what Williams with Chamber was saying about, okay, let us spread all the cards on our table. Mm -hmm. Can we vote based on X, Y, Z? Is it possible for tr for us to truly pick the right candidates basing off of the three C's he talked about character, competence, you know, and you know, you know I mean, if you go by that C's, eh, I was saying Brian, Brian Tracy is the owner of the C's. There are so many C's that makes for success: mm -hmm. character, competence, confidence, compassion, common sense, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Curiosity, collaboration, courtesy, courage, calm, creativity, consideration, consistency, commitment. How many of those leaders can we point to to say these are the C's and we can see them in them? But I think we have um, um, Loma, he's back. Please keep it within a minute. Yeah. Go good ahead. Evening, my sister. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, shoot. You have to call back, Loma. Your line is more pulled up. We have, you have to call back. We have to call that. You know? So, based on those C's that are reeled out, right? Uti. Let me come back to you. <laughs> do you understand? Do you think it's possible that if we want to say, okay, yes, we already have these cards. This is what, this is the choice that we have right now. We can't, you know, we can't throw the baby in the bathwater. This is what we have. You know, is it possible that if we truly look deep into what he was saying, like the message around the seas, can we truly find, you know, the right person emerge? Well, we hope so. That's what I would say. We hope so. <laughs> but what I still say is, um, on what basis are you making the decisions, mm. right? Um, it's still on the basis of what you've been told. So how many people are close enough to the camps of any of these um, candidates to mm. really say that they know the character of the man? You know the character that has been presented to you in the media. Sure. You know the competency that has been presented. You know the capacity. So it is still shots in the dark mm. when you have chosen which is why everybody say vote your conscience don't collect money at least if you make the decision yourself and it's a bad decision you can hold yourself accountable mm. you can't say somebody made you do it but it, it it is 
And that is with anything where campaigning is involved. I paint a picture, I come and promise you the world, whether you will get it on the other end of it. We don't have a history of it, so we can't say that we have any um, historical data mm. to show us that if you look for A, B, C, D, E will pop out. We don't have. Mm. So what you have right now, even the Peter Obis, the core councils, it is what media has told you. It's what people have told you. It's do you have things? It's just like we say when you're on, on, on the internet, be careful. When you're on social media, be careful. How do you know what is true? It's true, right? Hmm. It is, if, they, if a collective of people come together today and decide something is true and start to spread it, you will believe it. Absolutely. Because you have no other way to validate it. Hmm. Unless you have somebody in the circle that said, I know the day these 50 people made a decision. Yeah. Then they have a bigger task of even trying to convince you that those 50 people came together in a dark room somewhere and decided that this was the truth. Absolutely. So, it is a bit of a crap. We don't have enough. Um, we haven't had success in that space to say that there's a formula. Hmm. Which why I say that in truth, devote your conscience. You can do as much as you can to gather information and try and make an informed decision for yourself. But don't let your decision be influenced by today's money or a bribe or an incentive. That's Absolutely. all I can say. But Absolutely. That we have enough to say you can make I it, and then tomorrow you won't be disappointed. Mm. I, I, I'm not good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's so interesting. I was going to say that uh, as we are right now, mm. in all honesty, voting your conscience is mm. the best remedy. Because when you yeah. vote your conscience, you can slap yourself if you vote the wrong person. You know, let's quickly take comments. Okay. Uh, major, majority of the youth supporting Labour Party are the elites and urban majority of them in Lagos. Mm. The old people of today were the youth of yesterday. Mm. That's what this person has to say. Okay, this person says, yes, youth are having power to do it, but it may not be automatic now. I would like to suggest that picture of contestants be so... Oh, sorry about this English. Maybe they should Appear put on the, the, they should, <laughs> they the, the ballot paper. Thanks. Oh. Yeah. Because again, there has been some propaganda yeah. mm. and all of that. So uh, this person said it should be pictures on ballot paper. So you, so you know who it is who that you are, you are voting. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, that one is okay. a communication <laughs> problem. <laughs> but um, um, Uti, your comment. Okay. Give me one second. Okay. Says so so good evening, my beautiful sisters of ways so i i take it that this is from daniel illo absolutely so it's good evening my beautiful sisters of what are you saying hashtag ways do the youth have the power to install the next president the answer is yes but on one condition the condition is that the youths want to change and someone to create that change but with the desperation of the people that are contesting for an office is where the main problem is in a nutshell nobody has respect and regard for the people um, you know, everybody has respect and regard for people that are coming for president, coming out for presidency, and are desperate and cannot deliver. Only one is honest and sincere to deliver. Let us be very careful, my own dear beautiful sister Uti. Oh, thank you so much, Daniel. Okay, so someone says the passion you. of youth are proof of uh, that. He said, but strategy are behind the score. Mm -hmm. What are, I was going to add to um, what they're saying, you know, when Uti was talking about the narrative you've heard, the narrative mm -hmm. you heard. These people in politics today, they have been building the narrative for 20 for years, time, yes. 16 years, mm -hmm. 25 years. They've been building a specific narrative. So it's even difficult for you to identify the truth yes. and the, you know, because guess what? Politics is a long game. It's a game politics yes. is not mm -hmm. a game that so I just wait for four years and just go to that. Yes. So that's why the structure, the strategy is what we need. Do you have the power? Do you have the numbers? Yes. But strategically, you're not ready. You're not ready because you do not understand that this is a game that has been... See, they decided the presidency 20 years ago. Who is going to be installed as yeah, president? That's why some people can yeah, make some statements. Yes, yeah. with yeah. their yeah. protest, yeah. with confidence, they can say that. Mm. So, I mean, if you understand this, you then understand that, okay, we're in this for the long run. And why I'm saying this is spe specifically is that a lot of youth are saying that if Peter Obi does not become a president, they are going to leave Nigeria, blah, blah, blah. It means you are not ready. Of course. If you understand the game, you will know that this is not a game of four years I'm agitated and mm -hmm. I just get a leader. No. Exactly. We need to be, you that tenacity, this, you need to, that stay power. 
you need to keep the fire burning regardless of whether an election is coming in 37 days or okay. not. So you have to know this is a long game. I am ready to wait it out 50 yeah. years down the line. Yeah. And they will, I would install the right person for Nigeria. So we have to be ready for that. And I hope we are. On that so, note, <laughs> I have said yeah. my piece. You are uh, very we, we should we should we should be optimistic. I think yeah. that's it. like I said, optimism does not give you presidency. Yes, that is you, right? But then we're on a, I must say we're on the right path. If we but continue yes. this way in another eight years, trust me, it will be a this different thing we're talking about. This is the kind of energy about. we need. We just need to sustain it, mm -hmm. right? And like you said, be strategic. So that sustenance is the word I'm looking yeah. for. We don't have that sustainability. So how God yes, will help us. We are, so let's hope. It. Let's see. Thank After you. the election, we will know whether we have a sustainable uh, okay. capacity. Are we capacity to sustain? <laughs> Thank you, Uti. Thank you, Glory. Thank you, Chinelo. We had a fantastic conversation. Now, before we go, ensure you follow us on all our social media handles at Wisho Africa. You can interact with us further. Drop a comment and more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media. Like, share, invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. So if you missed our quote for the day, here it is again. If you have come to help me, we are wasting your time. But if you have come because your liberation is bound up in mine, we can work together. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. live as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy. <laughs>